Continuing our Irish theme, one of the finest parliamentarians, not just in these islands, in Ireland and in Britain, but anywhere in the world. A long-standing socialist member of the Irish Parliament, the Doyle, and now a member of the European Parliament. Please welcome Claire Daly. Thanks very much, George. Very hard to follow an introduction like that, but I think particularly hard to follow the incredibly impressive lineup of speakers that we've had here tonight. And I genuinely have to say I feel incredibly humbled to follow uh, in their footsteps. And I was going to say that I'm delighted to be here, but of course I'm not delighted to be here no more than any of the rest of you are delighted to be here because we shouldn't be here. We're here because of a travesty of justice that shouldn't be happening. We're here because we're witnessing and living through what will be and is one of the greatest cases of political persecution of our ages. And I think it's in that sense that I am glad to be here because like the rest of you, we're glad to be on the right side of history, to speak out against what's happening to Julian Assange. If you like to give him a voice, he's given such a voice to so many people around the globe and now he can't. So now it's our turn to do that. He's done that by telling the truth. Incredibly powerful revolutionary information. And you know, we often talk about speaking truth to power. But of course, power knows very well what the truth is. They know that. It's the truth they're trying to hide. But by speaking, actually, the truth is given to ordinary people to arm them in order to be able to establish and to challenge the status quo. And I think that's the onus on all of us here tonight. Now, as George said, I am a, a member, well, I'm still actually a member of the Irish Parliament. I have to go back early in the morning for that. But as a member of the Irish Parliament, I raised the case of Julian many times before. And our government didn't want to know. Their response on all of it was nothing to do with us. To the British government, to the Swedish government, nothing to do with us. Now, how in God's name could any country that would claim to be a democracy come out with that nonsense when everything that has happened to Julian Assange over the last seven years, right up to the 18 charges that are now levelled against him, mean, as Matt Tabby put it last week, the Assange case is a crossroads moment for the whole world, for speech, for reporting, for transparent governance, Without action, the CIA is set to become the world's editor-in-chief for a generation. That's what we're dealing with here, and that's what we're up against. It's a really chilling situation, and this actually should be the first item on the first meeting of the new European Parliament on the 2nd of July in a couple of week weeks' time. Now, I launched the, or wore the free Julian Assange t-shirt when we launched our European election campaign, and then I wore it again uh, when we got elected, not because of hardly any clothes, but actually because I thought it was very important to be out there with that issue. But you have to ask yourself the question, where are the left? Where are the progressives? Where are the Democrats championing these issues? It's utterly frightening that this case isn't centre stage on all of our lips and I pledge here and publicly that we will be using the platform of the European Parliament to take uh, that battle very much there because in April... The, uh, the, uh, but in April, when Julian was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy and, and arrested with an extradition request from the US, obviously quickly uh, following, what we were witnessing was the tentacles of American security states sliding into the rooms of the Ecuadorian embassy. This is the modern day imperialism in uh, action. Thanks to a change in government in Ecuador, an IMF a bailout and so on, he was given up by those who had given him sanctuary. We saw as well, of course, at the same time, Moreno's government, uh, at the behest of the Americans, taking the extraordinary uh, step to move against Ola Bini on the ridiculously fabricated 
fabricate a charge of attempting to destabilise the government and collaborating with Julian and uh, WikiLeaks. Now, this is the stuff of Orwell's 1984. And why isn't it being spoken against more? I mean, the media, the mainstream media, didn't turn up at all today to our press event at five o'clock. Look at the panel of speakers here. I mean, you've heard them. This is an audience that anybody would be proud to be associated with, and they didn't want to know. And why is that? Because what we're witnessing is, if you like, a chilling lesson in imperial power and the effects of propaganda. And as other speakers have said, the propaganda campaign against Assange has been unrelenting and incredibly uh, intense. And why? It's a question posed by some of the other uh, speakers. Why are they trying so hard to vilify and demonise one individual? Um, all of the personal slurs that people attributed, the mantra about charges in Sweden when there were no uh, charges there, the claims of him being, oh, this fantasist who's just deluded about himself, thinking the Americans are after him. Well, now that it's been demonstrated that, yes, actually, he was right, the Americans are after him, now they don't say anything uh, about uh, that situation. And why is that? Well, I think, in part, it's uh, revenge. If you like, why are they... It's in part revenge for revealing their secrets, but it's also chillingly to warn others and to stop the flow of information because information is power. It's actually revolutionary, and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have shown that. I mean, when you look at the world that we live in now, what we see is the stifling stranglehold of the mainstream media is actually a factor in why things aren't changing as much as many of us would probably uh, like. If you look at the society that we live in in a global scale, it's the most unequal it's ever been in our history. We have unprecedented wealth existing side by side with unprecedented poverty. We've seen the gap, uh, if you like, in, in, as, as never before. We see on a, a daily basis the enrichment of the fossil fuel companies while everybody and all the governments are talking about dealing with climate change. It's lip service uh, that they deal with. And the in, if you like, we have to put the incarceration of Julian Assange in that context because corporate interests dominate the globe. He has challenged their rule as he has challenged the military industrial complex that predominates and they only get away with that because of the role of the rest of the media and that's very much what we're up against here and I just want to briefly refer to a very I suppose simple account of where my path uh, crossed with Julian's because myself and my colleague Mick Wallace visited Julian the first year he was in the uh, Ecuadorian uh, uh, embassy, and I actually cannot believe how many years ago that was. And I mean, even at that time, after a year, the effect on his health was beginning. But my God, six years intervening in that time is, is truly chilling. And in uh, a small way, uh, WikiLeaks helped us, or we were able to work with them in highlighting, if you like, the role of the Irish government and the Irish state in breaching our neutrality and facilitating the US war machine, particularly through the use of Shannon Airport on a daily basis, uh, allowing the US military to transit the theatres of war in the Middle East, the scenarios outlined by the other speakers, Iraq, Afghanistan, where we, a neutral country, have had two and a half million US troops come through our airport at Shannon and the Irish government of course come up with a, an Irish solution to an Irish problem where we say and now come on now we do know that military aircraft from the United States come through Ireland a couple of times every day but they're not involved in any military activity at all. Uh, they're just, we don't really know what they're doing, but they're, they're not unarmed, they're not on their way to any military exercises, they're just passing through. Meanwhile, on a similar daily basis, we have civilian aircraft going through with hundreds of troops uh, on them. Uh, in the last five years alone, not to mind all the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, in the past five years, 750,000 US troops have transited through Shannon Airport and the Minister for Transport on a weekly basis uh, it gives 20 exemptions a week 
to allow us US military personnel bring their arms on a civilian aircraft. Over a thousand such aircraft last year, this year alone uh, 200 landing. Presently in Ireland we have two US veterans, one in his 70s and one in his 80s, who came to Ireland on Patrick's Day to search some of those military planes to give testimony to the fact that they transited through Shannon, a neutral country, with their arms with them in our airports. And where are they now? They're out on bail in Ireland. Their passports have been taken. They've been there for weeks now. They're awaiting uh, trial too. So WikiLeaks actually helped us to... <laughs> WikiLeaks helped us to expose the duplicity of the Irish establishment by releasing documents. And when myself and my parliamentary colleague broke into Shannon Airport ourselves a number of years ago to search the aircraft. We didn't get near the plane on time. They spotted us beforehand, but we were on our way to do the search and find out for uh, ourselves. But there was a court case that followed over three days, and the WikiLeaks papers were given as testimony to that, where we revealed communications between the servile Irish government and the US imperialism. We heard the minister at one stage basically writing to the American ambassador and saying, look at the wars going on in Iraq here. Now there's all this talk about renditions and that and people are getting very uncomfortable now. Irish people don't like that kind of carry on and we don't want to be causing you any trouble. But could we maybe agree to organise a few searches where you might allow us to come in, search a few, like we'll agree the ones with you beforehand, if that's all right. They didn't even do that in the end. Shocking, um, servile nature of the Irish political establishment. But you'd think that that would be front page news, but it wasn't, because they just don't want to know. Because that, if you like, is the name uh, of the game. It's the same game and the same silence that's underway in terms of the militarization of Europe that's taking place at the moment. As if we didn't have enough with NATO, the idea now of a European army is very much being put uh, centre stage. The last act of the outgoing um, European Parliament was to set up a new defence uh, budget on its own, the first time drawing directly uh, funding in order to fund uh, military hardware in a European context with the establishment of a 13 billion euro uh, defence uh, fund and budget. They also agreed to take out money for surveillance, for border control, money out of the youth budget, money out of the transport budget, all for militarism. And you know, when you compare it to the amount of money they spend on specific climate change action, it pales into insignificance. So we have to see the incarceration of Julian Assange in the context of this global climate of imperialism with the gloves off. And that's what we're up against. And what WikiLeaks showed was that power can be challenged by information and that's why he's a threat. I'm not going to repeat the points made by others. I too in the recent years have been to Syria, I've been to Iran, I've been to Iraq and very recently in the last month or two I've been to Venezuela and you only need to go to those countries to see that the narrative that you're being peddled by the Western media is so far from reality it's actually scary the scale of the propaganda. I mean we came back from Venezuela. <laughs> Having seen hundreds of thousands of people on the streets in support of their government, hundreds of thousands of them, we came back to front page news in Ireland about Juan Guaido who nobody in Venezuela had even heard of. The reality, he actually got less votes ever than I did for the European Parliament, and they say he's supposed to be uh, the president of Venezuela. It's absolutely uh, ridiculous uh, nonsense, but it shows the power of propaganda, the power of the bad media, the power of the established media, and how Assange and WikiLeaks are the counterbalance to that. So what we're here to say tonight, as citizens, as human beings, as a mixture of whatever walks of life we come from, is to say that Assange is a journalist. He is a publisher. 
who has been arrested for doing journalism, something that hardly anybody who carries the, the mantle of journalists does anymore, and none of them are fit to wipe his boots. And his colleagues who demeaned him, who lied about him, who castigated him and vilified him, with their silence, if you like, they have signing off on the right of US authorities to seize any foreign journalist anywhere in the world, lock him or her out of sight for the crime of exposing the powerful. They have, as other speakers have said, opened the door to a kind of extraordinary uh, rendition for journalists, real journalists that is, of course, not the stenographers of the powerful, um, which most of them actually are. So that's what we're here to do today. Uh, so I suppose my challenge to everybody here is let's not forget, if you like, that imperial powers don't like to have their secrets exposed. That's why they're a bit cross at the moment. Because their power comes from their ability to survive and thrive on secrets and on propaganda, on cultivating a constant sense of threat and uncertainty in the public. Let us not forget that they only get away with that because of the media and because of the silence of the rest of us. So our job today is to go from these series of meetings reinvigorated in whatever walk of life we're in to stand full square behind Julian Assange and behind WikiLeaks in the battle against US imperialism because that's what it is because his fight is our fight. It's a fight for truth, it's a fight for justice and we will do everything that we can to oppose his extradition to fight for his liberty and to fight for truth and justice worldwide. Claire Daly, you saw by the reaction of the crowd just what I said to our Icelandic colleague. How I wish that we could have parliamentarians like that. How I wish our parliament or our cohort to the European parliament forever, how long it is there, could speak with such clarity and power about the empire.